Welcome to Telecom World 2019 here in Budapest, Hungary. We're very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Julia Morinets, who is Executive Director of TAC International, Together Against Cybercrime. Thank Welcome you. to the studio. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much for having me here. Now, I'd like to start off by talking a little bit about uh, what you do. So, uh, what, what, what is TAC International exactly? Well, Tech International is actually a non-for-profit organization. We've been born in France, in Strasbourg, recently moved to Paris, as I was just saying. And uh, we have also office in Geneva. So what we do practically, we've been created in 2010. And we, have, we, we do the work in three main pillars, actually. We have uh, the first pillar, which is the assistance to victims of cybercrime. It's very new. <laughs> I think it's quite new all over the world, actually. The second one, this is the capacity building uh, on cybersecurity for different stakeholders, for uh, practically educators, for law enforcement, as well as for corporate users. And we have the third uh, layer, which is more awareness raising program uh, we run. We call it Youth IGF, Youth Internet Governance Forum. We've developed this uh, together with the multi stakeholder community at the IGF, at the Internet Governance Forum. And the young people actually around the world in 35 countries, they work uh, on cybersecurity awareness, on fake medicines online, on internet governance, so, so DNS system. Uh, and, uh, and they're quite active, and uh, we have around 30,000 members around the world. So how do you tackle cybercrime? You say you're offering assistance to victims of cybercrime. I'm sure that's a quite a difficult thing to do, is it? Uh, it is. It's very new, actually. We arrived to this because people were just writing us, you know, can you help us? And not simple citizens, which is very important to help and to assist, uh, you know, uh, the user as you or, or, or me, but also the SMEs and big companies and also public personalities. They were in trouble with the identity theft or, um, you know, payment system uh, fraud. So it was very... Um, quite an issue actually and we thought what should we do we should develop a procedure in order to help to restore the damage and to uh, restore the losses if we speak about the monetary losses so you dealing with banks and things like that as well <laughs> Actually, we do work with them because for the moment we propose only two types of assistance. This is the assistance related to the uh, payment methods and to the fraud related to the payment methods, methods, actually. We do work with banks because we've developed the procedure in order not to go to the court, so out-of-court uh, resolution procedure, so what we call ADR. And we also have uh, something called uh, um, cyberbullying assistance developed in Indonesia by our partner. For, for young people and, oh, I suppose, old, for, for old, people, old people. For all people, victims of cyberbullying, and there is a helpline and also psychological assistance here uh, that they will be very soon able to deliver. Uh, this is developed, by the way, by, by our um, one of our leaders of the youth program based in Indonesia. So we are very happy because this youth program on awareness raising, it's not just, you know, like uh, people were saying us, it's a, like, talking shop. No, it's not, because we have also targeted projects at cyberbullying, for example. So how can we build awareness and capacity around cybersecurity? Well, um, I will bring a little bit, um, you know, regulatory, um, I would say, answer here. I think we need to have cybersecurity strategies developed by different governments at national and regional levels as well. We need to have the awareness raising as a part of these strategies. Um, as well, we have uh, we need to have actually also a pillar on educational. So to have this in the curricula in the schools, uh, we need also to have the recommendation and the strategies for uh, corporate users in order for the private sector to develop the awareness for corporate users. That is very important. But once we have strategies, the work is not finished. The work will just start. And uh, because very important point is implementation. All is about implementation, how the national governments and regional authorities will develop and implement the strategies. So what are the main risks in extending connectivity in the developed and in the developing world? Yes, as I was saying, we, we can't just stop the connectivity, we can't just uh, stop developing the connectivity, as we can't stop developing the broadband, as for example for the car, car industry, right? Um, but uh, we, we, we really we, we have a, a couple a number of risks. We have risks related to the payment methods. We have risks to the related to the identity theft. We have risks related to uh, you know uh, child abuse. So we have 
a number of these risks, all these risks, they hold, well, actually the cr criminals, they are very smart. Actually, they adapt to the national and regional priorities and, uh, you know, uh, lacks, would say, that we can find in these different countries. It's like the uh, regulatory uh, policies or regulatory mechanisms that we can find and um, we need to adapt them to the national situation. And they do the same. So if we take, for example, the card fraud, the card fraud uh, is a little bit different. It's the same, actually, in the developed world and the developing world, right? But, for example, in the developed world, uh, what we will see, uh, we'll see more traditional card fraud. In the developing countries, it will be mobile uh, payment uh, fraud related to the mobile payment uh, solutions. But the problem, and the, at the end of the day, the same. We have a victim. So what to do with the victim, right? So uh, they, I would answer the questions simply. The um, actual issues are the same, but the criminals, they adapt to the national situation and they find the lacks in order to develop their criminal activity. And, and in terms of cybersecurity, I mean, uh, and cybercrime, is cybercrime <laughs> ever going to be defeated, ever going to be uh, controlled? Well, it's like every way, it's in the real world. You have criminality, what to do with this criminality? We need all to be together in order to have, and you asked me actually the question on cybersecurity strategies prior, um, before, um, and uh, once we have developed these cybersecurity strategies, indeed the most important is implementation, and in order to implement, we need to be all together. Uh, we need to work with national authorities, we need to work with the private sector and very important civil society because the civil society will have the grassroots information. And so, for example, the ITU world is one of these events where we can uh, have this um, triple interaction, I would say, between, you know, different stakeholders, public sector, private sector and civil society in a very balanced uh, uh, percentage and manner. So, um, yeah. Okay, good. All right, well, look... Thank you very much for joining us in the studio. I think that was absolutely wonderful. Uh, a really great insights into, into, uh, into what the work that you're doing and, and also the challenges that are out there. And hopefully we will catch up with you again, uh, perhaps in, in Geneva or, or, or another one of the ITU events. Great. Thank you for inviting me. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.